While the foolish Europeans are bringing the world closer and closer to world war, we have peace and prosperity. The success of our dollar diplomacy has secured Latin America from European influence. But there is one thing that we fear, that everyone is against us. In the East, Japanese and maybe even Russian imperialism could invade the Philippines or Alaska. In the North, we have the Canadians, a perfect starting place for the British to repeat the War of 1812. And in the South, Mexican raiders are constantly attacking our border cities. We must stand up for our American freedom and secure it. But first, we have to prepare our strong industry and humiliatingly weak army. To afford the coming wars, we will need huge money reserves. So we will pass the Gold Reserve Act to save as much of it as we can. Once we go to war, we can't rely on other nations for industry and money, so we have to create an American autarky. We most definitely have enough resources on our own to survive and thrive. So we will invest into the Henry Ford and John Rockefeller conglomerates granting us a bigger production base and more oil. Then we received news that our army had successfully kicked out a band of Mexican raiders. But it was a difficult battle showing how our army really needs modernization. At home our new reforms have been unpopular on one side of the political spectrum. The unions, they are calling strikes and disrupting work like crazy. We will immediately pass several reforms to appease them and get them to calm down, including the 8-hour workday act and the compensation act finally getting rid of union activism. Finally, our economic reforms are done. All we can do now is wait and let the free market make us richer. This means we can begin to fix our awful military. But first, we have to arm our civilians. Weapons will now be tax-free, allowing more and more of our population to buy them. This will not only make them support war more, but also boost our arms manufacturing. We can now begin the reorganization of our army corps. Both artillery and howitzers will be added and the units will be twice as big. But it will take time for us to convert our army of militias to it. While we wait, we will officially change our foreign policy to big stick diplomacy. If anyone tries to attack our influence, we will hit them with a big stick. However, the elections are getting closer and closer. Our current president, William Howard Taft, has done a great job so far, but we need someone with more experience. Teddy Roosevelt. He has spread our influence and even puppeted Panama. With him as our candidate, we can't lose the election. He even won his first debate against the isolationist Woodrow Wilson. And soon, the 16th of November, the votes had been cast and Teddy Roosevelt won. He immediately passed the Volunteer Act, allowing us to go from a disarmed nation to volunteer only. A small step, but in the right direction. But while we have managed to upgrade the majority of our military, the Mexican raids are constantly keeping us from our real potential. We must prevent the attacks. With an overwhelming majority, we pass the Peace Enforcement Act in Congress. We will immediately demand the Mexicans to transfer all power to us. They didn't accept. It seems someone doesn't understand who is the boss in America. We passed the Interventionism Act and immediately declared war on the Mexicans. The Mexican army, not prepared for this war, hasn't protected the small sliver of land between Baja California and the rest of Mexico. So we could encircle the region and marched all the way to La Paz. It took longer time than we thought it would, so the Mexicans could more or less reinforce their northern border. But with our army equipped with artillery and howitzers, we will blow through their defenses. We started our attack around the bandit city of Ciudad Juarez. Once it was captured, we continued to Chihuahua and the Mexican coast. Soon we had succeeded and encircled a big part of the Mexican army. After crushing the encircled divisions, we have already destroyed half of their army. 
The roads to Mexico City are open. We will end this war and bring peace to the region. Quickly moving south and encircling any defenders seemed to be a great strategy. We were so fast the Mexicans didn't even have time to organize a defense of their capital. After capturing it and a few more cities including Veracruz they surrendered. We annexed all of northern Mexico to stabilize the region and puppeted the rest. It is definitely worth helping our Mexican puppet to rebuild their country. But then we received news from Europe. Franz Ferdinand has gotten assassinated and the great powers are mobilizing. A storm larger than ever is growing in the world. We must protect our smaller neighbors because the great war has already started. Beginning with the Caribbean. But first, we will quickly revise the military budget and consumer economy to favor the needs of our armed forces. Now we launched our troops to liberate Haiti. Without any fighting they surrendered. They will love democracy. While we prepare to occupy the Dominican Republic, we will ask Denmark to buy Greenland and the Virgin Islands. After a quick discussion, they sold it to us to fund their army. Time for the Dominican Republic. And they too love freedom and democracy. Our protection of the Caribbean is finished since we already had Cuba as a puppet so we can now continue into Central America. We will approach them from the north and the south, hopefully meeting between Honduras and Nicaragua. We began our operations of liberating Central America. The only countries with an army was Honduras and Nicaragua so we could easily march in and capture the rest. The Honduras and Nicaraguan army tried their best to keep us away but with an outdated equipment and no training there was little they could do. Central America is liberated, we have puppeted all nations and begun sending them money to rebuild. We will now expand our liberation campaign into South America. But crossing to South America will be difficult. The border between Panama and Colombia is unpassable. The only way is through sea. And we have a secret weapon for this. Our army has together with our navy trained three marine divisions. It's big stick time. Our marines launched from their ports and soon arrived to Colombia. We overwhelmed their defenses and stopped them from reinforcing the area. But more than this we won't be able to expand, we need a second invasion. We quickly prepared it since the Colombians have been trying to push us back into the sea. After 14 days we launched it. Without anyone to defend the port we landed and could push a few Colombians back to unite with our marines. From there we continued along the Venezuelan border and the coast. But we had big troubles at entering any city because of the unfavorable terrain. And we need to capture them to succeed. So we staged a huge offensive advancing along the railway towards Bogota. We captured the city of Medellin and then arrived to the outskirts of their capital. The Colombian army was ready and had protected the city with four divisions. But in a clever act of maneuvering we lured them out of the city and then pinned them down outside it. With only one division in the capital we could after a few weeks of fighting enter it. This was their last big city and the government has now surrendered. After all our successful liberations the American people are finally supporting our wars. So we can form the Pan-American Alliance with the goal of uniting the Americas in one form or another. With Colombia liberated we can continue and begin the democratization of Venezuela. Nations in South America are now a democracy, except Bolivia but their leader has promised to begin democratization. While we liberated the nations our army has grown outstandingly. A bit more than a million Americans are a part of it. This means we are ready to help our northern neighbor to get free from their British overlord. Either they leave or America will begin military action. And the British took the right decision. Canada is free, but now they have an important decision ahead of them. 
Either they join us or become a radical nationalistic state. The North American Union will hopefully be created. Argentina seeing our anti-British stand and seeking our support in the issue of the Falkland Islands are asking to join the Pan-American Alliance. They are an American nation, so of course they can join. This set off a giant diplomatic scramble from Argentina's neighbors, as Chile, Paraguay and Uruguay all asked to join our alliance too. The only nations left are Bolivia, Brazil and Canada. But discussions with the Canadians have progressed greatly and soon they decided to join us and form the North American Union. All of North America is free from Europe now. All except small British colonies scattered throughout our continent. We will ask them to immediately leave or face the wrath of our army. And they accepted. We have turned southern Georgia and the Falkland Islands over to Argentina and released Guyana as a democratic puppet. With America for the most part liberated and freed, we can begin to spread our influence outwards and destroy any threat that exists. The Japanese. Their army has gotten totally humiliated, but with the strongest navy in Asia, they could possibly rise from their depths and strike at us. We will neutralize this threat accordingly. We've sent far too many divisions to the Philippines. We need to launch our primary invasion of Taiwan now. With 53% naval superiority we launched it, and with no Japanese divisions on the island we could quickly capture it. Next up, Okinawa. It was the same here, no Japanese and an easy landing. Now it's time to invade the Japanese mainland. We are expecting a minor defense of Nagasaki. But as we arrived, there were no Japanese at all. So our three marine divisions continued and continued to expand. Hiroshima, Osaka and Nagoya all fell without any battles. Yokohama and Tokyo too. The Japanese army is even weaker than we thought. With the fall of Niigata, the Japanese government surrendered. Since we were the ones naval invading the mainland, we got the Japanese puppet and could destroy or take over many of their ships. We are now stronger than the European powers who have been fighting their great war a long long time. So we can begin to spread our influence in Europe and turn the table around. 20 years ago we were fighting the Spanish to kick them out of the Philippines and Cuba. There are still generals and leaders in Spain who seek revenge, so we must finish them. But crossing the Atlantic to naval invade them will be rough. So we sent the French much needed equipment in return for military access. With our troops and navy in France, we declared war. Our five marine divisions launched from Bordeaux and landed in La Coruna. We tried to capture all of Galicia, but then the Spanish defenses arrived. The Spaniards are our strongest opponent yet, but we have a secret weapon, our brand new air force. We have already begun building an airport and a bigger port in La Coruna. Now it's a waiting game. A month later our first hundred airplanes have arrived. The Spanish army has had no chance in pushing us back. With our air support we will continue our offensive and capture all of Galicia. The Spaniards, tired after their attempts of counterattacks, are low organized. Thanks to this we could encircle them twice, capturing and killing almost 50,000 of their men. With all of Galicia liberated we are running out of supply, we need a second port. The closest is Oviedo. As the Spanish tried the counterattack, we counterattacked their counterattack and could break through. With Oviedo captured, we can send more troops to the front from France. The Spanish are constantly trying to push us back, but to no avail. We have a kill death ratio of more than 10, so we will once and for all stop their counterattacks. We began attacking in all directions with the goal of capturing Valladolid. After a lot of fighting back and forth, we captured the city, but our plan to stop the counterattacks have failed. They managed to break through in the west and are marching towards the sea. 
Luckily, our marines and reinforcements from France have arrived to push them back and encircle some of them. But our offensives into Spain are going slow. We must try a second naval invasion in southern Spain. The Spanish army was anticipating us, but still our strong marines landed. With Cadiz captured, we easily took Sevilla and tried to capture a second port, mainly Malaga. But Spanish reinforcements arrived and stopped us in the last moment. So, with them distracted in the south, we can continue in the north. After a quick offensive, we captured Bilbao. Then, we continued east, capturing Burgos and after a long march, Zaragoza. But more importantly, we arrived to the border with France, allowing us to supply our offensives from the French ports too. From Zaragoza, we continued even more east, towards Catalonia. After quite painful battles, we entered Barcelona, encircling several Spanish divisions. We will now set the last nail in the coffin, and we have to hurry since our spies have gathered intel about the British thinking about reclaiming their lands now that they have won the Great War. So we advanced rapidly to the south, capturing city after city. Madrid was one of the first to fall. We also began pushing from the south and captured Malaga. After capturing most Spanish city they surrendered and we puppeted them, implementing a free democracy. The British are now ready to attack us any moment now. We will remember 1812 and destroy them. One month later the British declared war at us. The Entente had officially been dissolved a few weeks ago. But since France and the Benelux have territories in the Americas, we will declare war on them while we fight the Brits. Portugal too, since they are a long time ally of them. For this war we have heavily reinforced Spain, since most of our battles will take place with its neighbors. Gibraltar, the heavily fortified rock, took a long time to capture. We only managed after sending in reinforcements. Meanwhile, in the Americas, we kicked the French and the Benelux out of Guyana, and several islands in the state of French Caribbean. Back to Iberia, Portugal has gotten reinforced by all the allies in the Liberation Pact. But all our American allies are here too, and with them protecting our back, we dared to spearhead into southern Portugal. It went so fast, we encircled Faro, their most southern city, but this wasn't our goal. Lisbon is. So we turned north and also began attacking with some divisions in the center. Soon they met each other and encircled a big part of the Liberation Pact's divisions. After crushing them, we tried to cross the river to enable us to encircle Lisbon, but after they continued to reinforce the area, it was deemed too difficult to cross and we stopped attacking. Before we began a new offensive, we first cleared up the south. Then we strike the north. Still, with our allies behind us, we entered Porto and encircled several enemy divisions. From there, we just continued south without anything stopping us. As we arrived in Lisbon, there were 24 divisions that were for the most part stopped from leaving the port and captured. All of Iberia is now free, one of four nations are defeated. Next up, France. And it shouldn't be difficult since the French are exhausted. They have been at war in almost six years in a row. War support and stability are rock bottom, especially considering we have already captured and killed 200,000 of their soldiers and sinked their pride of the fleet. We began attacking from Navarre into Aquitaine. Once we broke through, there was nothing stopping us. The only thing slowing us down was the French tanks. Our main goal was Bordeaux, which we managed to encircle and then captured. But we also managed to encircle a few Frenchmen in the Pyrenees. They haven't managed to fill our whole front, so we could uncontested continue north towards Bretagne and Normandie. We encircled all garrisons and later destroyed them with our reinforcements. Brest and Cherbourg were two of the cities to fall. From there we simply marched into Paris. The brave defences of Paris during the Great War has fallen short this time. The French government hastily retreated to Calais but we followed suit. We surrounded Le Havre and soon captured Calais and Lille. The French government is in shambles, so once we began another offensive in the center and we captured Orléans, they surrendered. 
Half of the Liberation Pact is defeated, only Benelux left on mainland Europe. And this was the simplest invasion yet. Our Argentine and Spanish allies contributed a lot and we captured Brussels and Amsterdam. Now the most difficult part has come, naval invading the nation with the biggest navy in the world. But during this whole war we have distracted it with our submarines. All from Ireland to Cap Verde and even Malaysia we have raided their convoys. This means their naval defense of mainland Britain is weak. With our divisions ready and the American and former Japanese navy ready we launched the invasion. After crossing the strait with no problems we landed without any British resistance. It seems this will be easier than we thought. <laughs> Victory! The sun has set on the British Empire. Time to partition it. In Europe, we puppeted England, France and the Benelux nation while giving Portugal to Spain. But things got more interesting outside of Europe. Instead of puppeting a bunch of different nations, we decided to annex them and begin to integrate them into our country. Mainly all of Southern Africa and Australia and New Zealand. We and our American allies got a few puppets in the Middle East but we liberated and split up all of India. Finally our homeland of America is safe, no colonialists to destroy us. There are only a few things we have to fix. The Bolivians who promised to democratize have turned into a full on fascist nation so we will promptly intervene. We even got help from the Brazilians who joined our faction. The Bolivians, completely surrounded from all sides, couldn't stop us and we entered La Paz, changing their government to a democratic one. But there is one more thing we have to do. I have a feeling that something dark will rise from Germany. It has already begun. We must stop it right now. The German army was totally defeated and restricted during the Great War and in the Treaty of Versailles so we could easily march in and establish the Weimar Republic. Of course, banning Nazism in its constitution. Most of the world is now free, all thanks to us. The long process of rebuilding Europe and Africa can now begin. And to ensure a safer world, we will also form the League of Nations to further spread freedom and peace. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.